It's deja vu as Barnabas is back in 1796 with Josette slash Kitty. The night Josette has jumped from Widow's Hill and things play out a little differently this time and Barnabas meets his most implacable enemy yet. Barnabas is back in 1796 for the second time. However, this time he's back right before Josette is going to kill herself by jumping off of Widow's Hill. Uh, this... <gasps> This time things are go a little differently, and instead of jumping off Widow's Hill, Josette poisons herself. Yay, change! Levi uh, Barnabas is abducted by Leviathans. Yes, that's right, you heard me, Leviathans. Before Supernatural did it in Season 7, Dark Shadows had a Leviathan storyline in 1969. Way to go. They give Barnabas this boxing, brainwash him and into being part of their cult because cults and stuff. So Barnabas goes back to 1969, ready to start the end of the world. Barnabas brings the Leviathan box to a couple who's just moved into town who own an antique shop, antique shop Megan and Philip Todd. What is inside the box is kind of like Star Child from V. It's a little, uh, living thingy that grows exponentially starting off as a baby, Joseph, a little boy, Alexander, then turning into Michael, a preteen, and lastly forming into Jabez, a fully adult male. Um, Carolyn's father, Paul Stoddard, shows up, who, as we learned earlier, was not killed by Elizabeth. Kind of awkward. Really awkward, actually. And he is there to tell Carolyn that he accidentally sold her to the Leviathans. You meet a guy at a bar and he says if you sell, if you give him your most valuable possession or your soul in exchange for wealth, fame, fortune, all that stuff, tell him no. It never works out. Come on, Paul started. Come on. Um, Jebez actually does fall very in love with Carolyn. He also does murder Paul. This time, he was definitely murdered, though. He did a better job than Elizabeth. <laughs> That's in bad taste. Anyway, Carolyn gets all the monster guys. And she starts to have feelings for him as well. Uh, on a different note, Barnabas is driving around town. Oh yeah, he's human again. But that won't last long. Because nothing does. And while he's driving, he finds out Carolyn, or well, before he was driving, he found out Carolyn has a date with a guy who's just moved into town. And knowing Jabez wants her for himself, Barnabas decides to hit this man, who turns out to be Quentin Collins. Yeah, that's right. The immortal werewolf we all know and love. But he's going by Grant Douglas, so I guess it's Jeffster all over again. We'll call him Granton. <sighs> what is it with all these men from the past coming into the present and having amnesia? I just don't get it. However, Quentin does quickly regain his memories when Julia buys a port- well, gets the portrait of Quentin from Skylar Rumson. You might be wondering, who's Skylar Rumson? I'll tell you, he's a leviathan. Also, the husband of Angelique. Yeah, that's right. The one who Doc Browned it to 1796 uh, after being a vampire, and then met Barnabas again in 1897 and is now here, married to this guy for the past six months. I don't understand how time works. It's confusing. And I don't think uh, Dr. Shadows understands how time works either. Whatever, we'll go with it. So, she gets the portrait, shows him, he's, he remembers. And let's fast forward it to him meeting Chris, his great-great-grandson, who is suffering from the werewolf curse that was put placed upon him because of Quentin. That's all awkward and stuff. Can't use bad words. Um, and they end up finding Charles Delaware Tate, who is apparently still alive and must be 99 years old. Sure. So Chris gets him to paint a portrait of him like he did Quentin. However, it doesn't stop him from transforming and killing Charles. So, 99 is a good long life. Moving on. Um, Chris, as a werewolf, is the only thing Jabez is afraid of. Because apparently werewolves are the only things that can hurt leviathans. And we're apparently around in the time when the leviathans, leviathans existed before humanity. So I don't understand what werewolves were before there were people. That's confusing. I'll, I'll ignore it though. Story sure did. And Jebez is actually really powerful. Um, like I said, he killed a few people, including Paul Stoddard, and he turns Barnabas back into a vampire. 
Never have I felt such a creature of the night. sure how Barnabas was able to be turned back into a vampire. I mean, whatever happened to Adam? And, you know, the rule that is Adam's alive, Barnabas is alive. Let's throw it out the window, because we forgot about that actor anyway. Um, it all makes sense. So, the Leviathans are really trying to get uh, Chris as the werewolf to kill Carolyn. That way, Jebez won't be able to stop him, and they'll be able to control him better, because Jebez is starting to rebel against the Leviathan cult, because let's not forget they are a cult of creepy, creepy people. And then uh, Barnabas bites, well, he tries to bite um, Maggie, but Quentin stops him. And Quentin's really helping Barnabas out through the whole vampirism thing. And they bring Willie back, and he had left town. And he actually had started a really great life. He had a girlfriend, he had a great job, things were going well for him. He's back into this vampire business, which sucks. And then uh, Barnabas bites Chris's girlfriend, Sabrina, and then Quentin confronts him because he's being a good great-great-grandfather for the first time ever. Sorry, that's funny. Um, after this, Chris leaves town with Sabrina and his sister Amy, and it's revealed in an audio tape, uh, The Enemy Within, that he married Sabrina, and they live happily ever after. No, I'm just kidding. It's Dark Shadows. She murders him. Alternatively, however, uh, Sam Hall, the writer of Dark Shadows, stated that uh, Chris would have wolfed out on their wedding night and killed Sabrina. <laughs> that scared me. And... Um, then when he came back to being a human, found her dead body, killed himself. And then Amy would be adopted by Carolyn. You know, these people are so happy. Um, speaking of happy endings, the ghost of Peter Bradford shows up, wanting Jebez dead, because apparently he led to Vicky jumping off Widow's Hill in 1797. Seriously? Fun. Oh, and that caused him to be hung. Okay, cool. So, okay, Quinn goes to Collinwood and tells Carolyn that he's the great-great-grandson of the original Quentin Collins, although he's not the original Quentin Collins, he's technically the second Quentin Collins, but we'll get more on that later, and therefore he's a distant cousin of hers, and I'm pretty sure this is Barnabas' line. Nicholas Blair returns to be evil, and he's apparently the leader of the Leviathans, and he started the whole Leviathan thing by... Um, asking the original Leviathan who gave the box to Barnabas in 1797 to take it back to 1969 to exact his revenge for causing them to, uh, causing him to fail at his plot to turn Adam evil. I don't know what's happening. Revenge. Revenge is happening. That, I don't. <sighs> Something about Diablo, which apparently in 1969 people didn't know Diablo was Spanish for devil. Well, I don't. Um, yay. So anyway, Jabez kills Nicholas Blair, and then he marries Carolyn, and uh, Barnabas and he team up to defeat the rest of the Leviathans, which was kind of a mistake because then Skylar Rumson, Joseph, or Angelique's husband, kills Jabez by pushing him off Widow's Hill. I guess we're going to have to call it Widow's Hill now. And then Carolyn is completely destroyed by this. Don't worry, Uncle Barnabas will make it better. And he forces Bar uh, Skylar to shoot himself. And I should also mention that Angelique is trying to get back with Ar Barnabas. Because it's always Barnabas. She really does love him. It's kind of sweet. And he tried to warn her about Skylar. And uh, we'll get there. We'll get there, guys. This this hate-hate relationship slowly becoming a friendship. And I love it. Um, so, as the vampire for the fifth time now, uh, Barnabas is having a really difficult time and uh, resisting blood, so he goes into a newly discovered room in the East Wing, which is a gateway to a uh, parallel dimension. Yeah, that's right. He Rick and Morty's it. No joke. Stay tuned to find out what happens in parallel time. We need to move night and thanks for watching.